with Ailey, we bring uh, the very first app for decision intelligence to the market. Uh, so imagine this um, as an AI decision advisor, which connects to all the data of the company and always works in the background to find what are opportunities for the business. Okay. This means that the impact which we which we bring to businesses are not only productivity on having an additional resource making things easier, but actually also delivering impact in terms of uh, better sales, better margins, and funding more innovation. So, so you launched today uh, what you're calling the super agent. Is that correct? Yes, correct. We launched today uh, the super agent as part of the VivaTech uh, conference. And, and how is the super agent, if I'm a business owner, what does it do for me? So the super agent is now connected uh, basically to all the data uh, of your company um, and can find correlations in terms of, um, you know, where to invest more to optimize uh, sales um, or margins, but then is also connected and that's a new feature which we have for the super agent is also connected to your calendar. So it goes one step further to give you the recommendation also in the right moment, in the context where uh, you are. Is this a supply chain agent or is it uh, an order agent or is it all of that? Um, I would say it's all of that. Think about it as uh, the central brain of the company, which goes from R&D to manufacturing and supply to commercial and finance and looks for optimization across all the area. And I think that's something which is, um, you know, part of our differentiation as an app. Uh, we are unique in terms of really giving transversal insights of the company and breaking the data silos uh, of the companies because ultimately you want to get to better and faster decisions and that's what an AI decision advisor is about. It's most of the time on actually managing to um, understand the implications between uh, the different functions of, of the organization. Before AI, wouldn't this just have been data indexing and data chunking and who would have been responsible for these decisions? Well, I think um, before AI, this was actually not possible, right? Because it would, uh, it would be stuck in the different silos uh, and functions and it would, um, you know, like most of the time you wouldn't have the prediction on what's going to happen, but more the view when something was happening, like let's say a supply outage, you would then analyze why this actually happened, right? Rather than trying to predict it and hand over that insight to the commercial function and finance function um, to basically report. Um, but there was no tool or organizational setup allowing to get to the insight in real time in a predictive uh, way. So, so now that you've had agents uh, before the launch of Super Agent, in the real world experience, as your agents have helped companies move forward, and I know you're working with some big names, if you're allowed, please drop those names. What kind of percentage, uh, if there is a figure, is this saving them an expense or is this allowing them to grow their revenue? Um, that's a brilliant question. Indeed, we are focusing on Fortune 500 uh, companies um, across industries. Uh, that's where we see there are a lot of data and a lot of impact which we can unlock. And um, we do indeed both cost savings, but also generating more sales. Um, there was a recent study where one of our customers were sh uh, sharing that um, by applying our uh, supply inventory agent, they managed to reduce around 300 million of uh, out of stock issues, which uh, which they had. So that gives you a good perspective that the impact which we deliver is in hundreds of millions um, as Fortune 500 companies have, um, you know, like big complex topics to, to solve. So, um, I think I'm specifically passionate about the growth and how we help companies actually to generate more growth um, on top of the efficiency, which for me is the base of 
uh, AI making us all more efficient. So, so if I want to repeat what I heard you say to make sure I got it correct, if I did not correct me, please, but sure. you helped that client um, realize savings of about $300 million. Uh, correct, like avoiding a sales loss of $300 million, correct. So, so going forward, when I'm, and again, please drop names if you can of the clients who are using the agents. But in the current world, I remember when everyone 20 years ago got excited about just-in-time supply chains. Is this the next step in just-in-time or is this a, an actual tool in a world where you don't know where the next supply is coming from? because of the volatility we're experiencing in the trade wars and tariff situation. Exactly. So I think that's the next level of a tool which we will have to um, deal much faster in real time with volatility, right? Um, and preempt that. But then what it also does and what is part of the super agent is actually acting also on our behalf. So you probably hear a lot about autonomy and um, in, in the context of agent. So where those tools go now one step further is that from the recommendation and the prediction of what's going to happen based on an external event, uh, you now can also give to the agent the autonomy to really operationalize uh, those recommendations. So in the same context, what will happen is that the inventory agent will give you the perfect allocation um, of where to distribute uh, products across sites or distribution centers. And with full autonomy, um, it will actually already allocate those in the operational systems. Again, I want to repeat what I heard you say, because we both work in AI, different um, tabs of AI. But in your world, you mentioned autonomy, and we have autonomous uh, content generation, but we have um, protocols in place to protect against uh, bad outcomes and hallucination and just, uh, I would say, made up kind of uh, data. I would imagine your agent has those protocols. Do you have a percentage for fail or success that you could share with us? Yeah, totally. So I think that indeed for this kind of important decisions, uh, we take uh, security and meaningfulness of the recommendations very, very serious and depends on the area. Um, I can tell you that in terms of predicting uh, sales, we go to accuracies up to 99%. In the area of predicting supply um, outages and uh, root causes, uh, it goes over 80%. Um, reliability, which is much, much higher than current standards uh, of transactional systems without uh, AI. Additionally, we have built, um, you know, mechanism also implementing external data to help to validate and uh, prevent hallucinations uh, on top of relying just on the internal data and backtesting accuracies. When I hear you say 80%, my friends, when I try to convince them of the power that AI offers, they'll say, but it's making mistakes. And I said, yes. And so is your human staff. That's part of life. But if you could close the gap from roughly 50 or 60% to 80%, mm -hmm. is that then the case where you need autonomous AI to help you in this process? Um, yeah, exactly. I think that's the, that's the, in most of the cases, that's exactly what's happening. We know that it's already 20 points better versus uh, humans. So this allows us actually to go one step further and say, okay, well, then let's execute because actually the, the trade off which you have is to not execute and go back to the example, lose the 300 million. Um, so I think it's, it's a decision paradox on, uh, rather waiting for taking a, deci a decision or taking multiple decisions and maybe one out of 10 will be, um, you know, the wrong one, uh, but still better than not taking uh, the decision. I, I encounter fear on the part of people who are not as perhaps familiar with interacting with AI agents when you hear the word autonomous. How do you get uh, a chief technology officer or CEO or even the, the CFO, to buy into autonomous is actually your friend and not perhaps your Achilles heel. 
Yeah. Um, that, it's very interesting. Actually, um, I see both, right? I see some companies really exciting about autonomy and finally seeing that's actually the big benefit uh, of AI. And then some, indeed, like you're saying, there is maybe a bit of skepticism. Oh, I have to let go now even more than I thought I was letting go with with AI. Um, there are like different ways and playbooks to address that. I think that one of our key edges is on having an interface layer which is super simple and easy to use, which takes the fear of, oh, this is super complex, I don't understand, away from the moment you open the app um, and you see that, you know, like it's, uh, you, or you don't see the AI behind because it's so simple to use. My experience is that the natural language interface and the real-time ability of AI to deliver instant data is what makes it that much more effective and efficient. Uh, I, I still believe you need the human uh, element as part of the equation, but do you see a future where the human element's no longer necessary? Uh, well, I think we will experiment now that we have uh, agents sitting at the table and companies go into leveraging uh, you know, their governance meetings with agent swarms at the table, we will uh, we will test it, uh, this out. Uh, I think in some areas, the human will not be needed. And this is just a matter of time and um, areas where we can let go more and more. I'm, I'm convinced um, about, about that happening. And I think where, where we go one step further is on uh, leveraging the natural uh, language interaction to ease up the experience. But we go one step further on actually bringing proactively decisions and prompting the right question before the, the user sometimes doesn't know what the right question to ask is. And I think that's one of our big differentiation in terms of our super agent mm -hmm. being a decision advisor and not just a chatbot. Does the agent, is it precluded from looking at real world data outside of the client in order to help make decisions? Or is it drawing upon licensed databases in addition to the proprietary database of the client in order to formulate a suggestion? Um, so indeed, we combine internal uh, data um, and external data. Uh, publicly also available data, right? There is a lot of publicly available data which we can actually leverage to uh, to really enhance the internal uh, view. And then in some cases, companies have proprietary data which um, comes on top. What are some of the questions, if you can just share that, that potential clients and now current clients have asked in their journey to sign up for this? I think that, um, you know, a lot of the questions come back to accuracy. How accurate uh, is this? Um, and I think that's something which is really linked to our standard of being a ready to use app, right? Uh, we have highest accuracy standards because that is needed if you want to have a ready to use app versus something which you'll have to spend a lot of time building to, to validate. Um, the other question which, which comes up is, how do I implement this? How do I make the organization actually use this? And um, where we try to like really help companies is to realize that this is not yet another project and it shouldn't be treated like a, a change management project, but it's actually really rewiring how we work with, uh, with AI and um, especially in the context of the super agent, uh, rethinking routines and governance uh, around um, agents and how to operate. It's not just another tool which we add on top of uh, the ecosystem. This is more of a personal question, not necessarily a business question. What drew you to AI? Why did you choose this? Um, yeah, thanks for the question. Well, I, I was dealing with a lot of numbers, right? I was, uh, my background is in finance. I was leading a multi-billion uh, P&L and I've disrupted my own role um, in AI for finance, implemented AI for my own role and realized that finally I found a technology which um, made me achieve what I always wanted, spent much more time on business uh, strategy rather than numbers crunching. 
Um, but then I saw the potential of really going beyond finance and having um, AI at scale across the enterprise to really help us to get to the next level of decision making. Are you using your agent in your decision making on client inflow and outreach to potential clients? I, I think uh, that's um, that's the part where, as is Fortune 500 uh, companies, we have a lot of inbound uh, reach. Um, our setup is pretty different, right, in terms of, um, you know, selling to executive teams. Um, so it's, it's pretty, I would say, exclusive uh, sell. Um, but what we actually use is our CI scanner agent to uh, get ready for our clients and already in the first interaction have already an insight in terms of what is actually the competitiveness and um, of, you know, uh, of them in the market. And one thing, for example, which we can already do is predict the revenues of the customer just based on external data. So, yeah, I mean, I, I love using this already uh, for ourselves and um, not only for efficiency, but also being a much better partner from for day one. Uh, for our customers. So I'm I'm obsessed about being ROI positive from day one. I really mean it uh, with also the first interaction on, on day one. Uh, so, so let me conclude with two questions. The first is all business sizes or is there basically where this functionality becomes truly effective? Is there a minimum um, annual revenue figure and then the sky's the limit? Um, so, yeah, it's Fortune 500 companies. And then the threshold where we go is over 1 billion uh, revenue. Um, and we use this as a proxy of like enough historical data available for AI to be uh, meaningful. Um, so that's that's normally how we uh, how we really focus. I think the additional criteria is and as we expand is having at least two years of history of, of data um, is, is the next criteria uh, where, you know, sky is the limit to your point on who we actually can give the, this app. Coming back to the launch of the super agent, I'm, um, I'm really excited for everyone being um, empowered uh, by a super agent um, who now doesn't, um, you know, like optimize only in the background, but prompts you in the right moment on what decision uh, you need uh, to take. So, um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about, uh, about the ability to each of us have an AI decision advisor on, on our side and um, ultimately make us better and um, make companies' shareholder value um, increase.